it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and I'm literally so excited because today I get to film one of my favourite videos to film across the whole year and that is a video where I recommend you books by black authors. I've got 20 books here and it's Black History Month in the US. I don't live in the US but I am here to celebrate black history and black people any which Way. So here are your recommendations. I've covered a lot of genres here, I've covered a lot of different formats and hopefully you'll find something in here for you. I'm going to start with some books that I haven't even wrapped up yet because I read them so recently. The first one I recommend is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson and this is their young adult memoir where they talk about what it means to be male and gay while living in the US and their experience growing up with their changing sexuality and also just as a black person in this family. And this got me so emotional. I do not cry when I'm reading, but I can literally feel my heart being torn into pieces while reading this book. And that is because George M. Johnson talks so much about family and how having a supportive family can just make such a big difference, but also the ways in which some people have failed them in their journey of growth, but also particularly writing letters to some of the characters. But they also talk particularly about their history, their childhood, what they learned about being black as they grew up and the first moment something racist occurred to them and happened to them. But their university experience, coming out to different people and then by the end of it kind of a bit of an open letter towards the rest of their life. Just beautifully written with some really concrete examples and it ended in such an emotional place and just think this was a fantastic read if you want to learn about some of the intersectional experiences of being someone who is black, American and queer. Then I want to recommend you a poetry collection I read recently and that is Haruko Love Poems by June Jordan. So June Jordan was also queer and for the first part of this poetry collection she's writing love letters to a woman and I did struggle with the first part of this poetry collection because I felt like it was so personal to June Jordan and sometimes reading poetry that's that level of personal it can be difficult to break into because you know you're missing inside information. But even if you struggle with part one I recommend this entirely for part two because there is just something about the way June Jordan writes rhythm and also specifically disjointed rhythm that just got to me. She writes in a way in which sometimes you're in this certain flow and then she breaks it and she breaks it intentionally. So you have to go back and read and kind of figure out what she was doing there, what she's trying to draw your eye towards. And that way of having that blend of rhythm and disjointed rhythm means that you have to read carefully, you have to read slowly, you really have to take the time to process, you can't race through this collection and I loved that. The final poem in this collection is one of the longer ones and it is an absolute masterpiece. I finished it and I just sat there awestruck and the use of imagery in a certain time and place as well as the emotions that she's talking about, it was just all brought together in such a resounding wonderful way and I really recommend this poetry collection. I'm also going to be recommending an essay collection now and that is Things I Have Withheld by Kai Miller. I read this and I absolutely loved it. This is about him talking about in each and every essay one of the situations in which he felt like he had something to say but he kept his silence and didn't say anything. And sometimes that's for reasons of safety, sometimes that's for when he doesn't know whether his opinion is the right one and sometimes that's a reaction to the people that he's around in that situation. And Kyle Miller is a black gay man who's Jamaican and lots of this is written in Jamaica so if you want to read books that are set outside of the UK or US this could be a good place to do that and to hear about the queer scene in Jamaica was just something I'd never really read about before and so it was kind of opening my mind to this whole other side of a country that I share heritage in but didn't know about these experiences. And Kai Miller also goes to the UK and to the US so you see what he's, how he is perceived in those places and how he perceives himself and his own identity differently in those places versus when he's in the Caribbean and of course he also goes to Africa and he travels through a few countries there and he talks about his heritage and his background in those countries and the ways in which he can relate to them but also the ways in which he just can't and I found this was also fascinating. His writing style is so poetic and beautiful and lyrical that you just will sink in to the words themselves and if essay collections as a 
genre puts you off, please don't be, because it's almost like reading short stories, the way these are so personal and so carefully written. Jumping into fiction now, so into something entirely different, I'm going to recommend a romance, and this one is Christmas themed, but you can literally read it at any time of the year, I do recommend it at Christmas, it's called Christmas at Rosebend by Naima Simone, and it's following this woman who goes to Rosebend, she's got a lot going on, her father who she believed was her biological father for her entire life has just passed away and he has left her as a guardian to her half-sister who's a teenager and they don't get along so she's trying to deal with this new guardian role but on his deathbed the father admits that he's not actually her true biological father and she has a different father so she's kind of looking into that she wants to know about that and the father before he passed away set them up on a bonding trip to go to Rosebend where he has history but Rosebend is a place that is called that is all about Christmas it's all about the festive season and our main character hates Christmas and while she's there she meets a certain someone and a romance ensues. This was a fantastic book. It does what I really like in Christmas stories where it's not just focused on the romance element but it's also really focused on family. Found family in some ways but also the complications of just having a very complex knit together family in different ways and forms. Our love interest has a lot that he needs to work through in terms of grief in some ways which is a certain buzzword for me so of course I love that element but she is also grieving and they're both grieving in different ways about different people and to see how their grief storylines reflected each other but differed from each other was quite fascinating to read about. It's got all the Christmas feels because it's set during Christmas time in the city that loves Christmas and it was just written really well. There's two chapters of steamy scenes so just be aware that if you're going to there there is some steaminess but it was done really well. It's medium level heat and it's very very cute. Our main character is the black character and she has a really cool hairstyle which I have literally mimicked. I really like this style where she's got a shaven head and then like all the rest of her hair is to the side. I adore that style. I've never read a romance where the character had that hairstyle and that was one of the reasons why I loved it even more. So moving on to some other recommendations, if you are a literary fiction lover I'm going to be recommending for you Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. This is a very thin short fiction book and it's talking about this black family and you go into the headspace of each of these characters to see what they've done and what they haven't done and how that's impacted the relationship they have with the rest of their family. I think it was so fascinating to just go through all of those perspectives steadily because while I could hate a character in one perspective and then when we hopped into their perspective I was all ready to hate them but then you get to see what they experienced in their life and why they did things the way they did and you cannot help but understand. It talks about racism of course but it also talks about what it means to be a black family who loves in different ways. It's got queer sides to it, the storyline, but it's also just about a mother who did not know or did not or was not prepared to be a mother. A husband who's trying his best and a daughter who doesn't know where she stands amongst it all. It's very, very good. Woodson is an amazing writer. For people who want another essay collection, I'm going to be recommending Black and Female by Sitsi Darumbega. She is a fantastic writer on what it means to be Black and Female, especially Zimbabwean Black and Female, which is where she's from. And she talks extensively in this essay collection about the creative arts industry and the gatekeeping that goes on and how it's very difficult for black women to break into those arts and industries. It talks about how there is a bias towards if you're going to be getting an African story that it's either a Ghanaian or Nigerian one and other African countries seem to be forgotten or ignored and there's just so much power in her words. I do think the first essay can be a bit overwhelming because she's throwing so much history at you but a lot of that history is needed to understand the concepts that she's going to discuss in her later essay collections and my favourite essay collect my favourite essay in the collection was the last one where I think she brought together all of her ideas in a very concrete way that really drove home the point of the struggles of being and the celebrations of being black, female and Zimbabwean. Going to a young adult 
kind of contemporary book with a twist on it. I've got Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds that I wanted to recommend to you. I thought this book was so much fun. So we're following this trio of friends and particularly focusing on our male main character and he meets this girl and falls in love with her but then everything goes wrong with her health and then a couple months rewind and he is caught in a time loop where he gets chances to try and save this girl that he really fancies time and time again but there's a lot to do with what do you sacrifice in order to do so because when he makes changes those have knock-off consequences which could affect either his family situation or his close-knit friendship group and it's about what you choose to prioritize in life and I thought it just handled its topic of making the choices you make so very well. It was a beautiful depiction of romance but it was an especially beautiful depiction of a friendship group that feels like a found family. All of the main characters are black and I loved how much the parents were involved but also as someone who really enjoys time loop stories I do think sometimes they can get repetitive. However this time loop was not the span of a single day or a couple of hours, it was the span of about three months I believe and by having it be three months it means there could be so much differentiation in what happens depending on which avenues and choices he decides to make so in no way did it feel repetitive and it was just so well done and I just think it was a lovely story that I recommend more people read. Read. If you are looking for a short fiction book, a short story, you can't go wrong with Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison is the queen of writing, largely. That's such a big statement, but she does it so well. And in her short story, Recitative, it's about these two women, one is white and one is black, or at least that's what we assume because their race is never told to us, but we know that they are different and they grow up starting from the same situation and their lives branch into two very different paths. And it's about what happens when they come together in certain avenues of their life and certain moments. It deals with themes of memory and how memory can play tricks on us and how you build yourself on the memories that you hold of your past self. But also it deals with time, it deals with race, and it was just so well done. Toni Morrison effortlessly. She's an effortless writer and even though it's a short story and it feels contained in that short story and finished, it still leaves you thinking about it after you've turned that last page. If you want some more non-fiction I've got another one for you and that's Consumed by Aja Barber which is one of the best non-fiction books that I read last year. Consumed is about her experience with fast fashion and consumerism. Aja Barber works in fashion and design, she's worked in the US and in the UK so she knows a lot about the industry, about where our clothes come from, about our consumerism habits and she herself struggled with consumerism and fast fashion. So she talks about why we struggle with those issues and why you might struggle with those issues and she talks about the sustainability aspect of them and why it's not a sustainable way that we are handling fast fashion at the moment and then she moves on to give you concrete examples of the next steps that you can take which all seem very approachable and even though she's giving you these very specific examples and steps of what you need to do the way that she talks about them you can apply that consumerism element to anything you might be addicted to buying for me even though i don't struggle with fast fashion as you'll have seen in my videos i wear the same clothes a lot it did make me think about my bookish consumerism and the ways in which i need to process that and i just think it was so well done and the audiobook is a great listen if you think that's a good way for you to process such a story so my next one is actually a teenage guide so if you're a parent this is where you should be listening up because the Black Girl's Guide to Glowing Up is a fantastic guide for your teenagers. It talks about everything under the sun that you might want to discuss with what it's like to be a teenager, but what it's like to be a black teenager, a black female teenager in particular. So of course it's going to cover some of those things that often teenage female guides do, such as periods and menstruation, but it also particularly talks about skincare and also hair care for kinky hair for our type of skin. So you're getting that aspect to it as well. But it talks about larger topics that I think more teenagers need to be aware of and processing at such an age, what it's like when you start earning money as a teenager and how you can save with your money, how you can spend your money, what you can do with your money. It also talks about religion and because of the fact that the authors 
interview several different people from several different walks of life and several different paths, there's no bias towards one particular religion. It talks about choosing a religion for yourself, whether you don't want to choose one. So it really kind of taps into a little bit of everything, crushes, family, and I just think it's such a concrete guide, one of the ones that I wish I had been given when I was a teenager, but didn't exist at the time, and now it does. So if you've got a black female teenager at home, this is one I would recommend getting for them. Speaking of teenagers, let's continue in the same vein with a young adult contemporary that I think is absolutely wonderful, off the charts amazing, and that's On The Come Up by Angie Thomas. This one follows our main character who just wants to be a rapper, she wants to be on her come up, and she's aware that if she makes enough money, then maybe it will be good for her family who are struggling financially and who need a bit of a break in terms of money to keep the bills running, to keep the heating on, to keep the lights on. And it's about her going to school, but also trying to break into her rap career. And when she starts getting undue attention for different reasons, it's about what she's going to be doing with that attention and how she's going to wield it. And Angie Thomas, if you've read The Hate You Give, you already know this, she is a brilliant writer. And the way she writes about a plethora of subjects all in one storyline will never cease to amaze me. And this one, she's talking about, again, a depiction of a very complex family where aunts and extended family can be just as much within your close family as anyone else. She's talking about when you're a teenager and you start to feel fluttering feelings for your friends. What does that mean? And it's messy in terms of romance in the way that only teenagers can be. We also get to see this depiction of what it's like to be a black teenager in America in particular because while we're following this girl who just wants to be a rapper there's so many connotations that come with wanting to be a female rapper and it talks about the ways in which the rap industry is not as welcoming towards female rappers and the things that they have to do and the things that they can say and can't say and how they get judged it delves into all of that but also our main character as I was saying as a female teenager who's black in the US, she should be going to school, she should be focusing on her goals, she should not be at school worrying about whether there's heating, whether there's food in the fridge, and she is, she's aware of their poverty, she's aware of their situation and the trappings that they are in. She is facing microaggressions at school and is getting judged for her race and is among all this violence. And so it talks about the ways in which the system fails black people while also talking about the joys of being a black teenager. She just balances everything. You should read this book. Going back to poetry, I just need to recommend the poetry collection Bless the Daughter, Raised by a Voice in Her Head by Walton Shire. This is a fantastic poetry collection. I think it's some of the most beautiful poetry I've read in a very, very long time. The way that Walton Shire uses imagery, such good imagery and enjambment in her poems are fantastic. I think they accelerate the feelings and emotions that she's talking about even more. A lot of these have to do with concepts of blackness, of course, and motherhood and womanhood, but there is a large focus on what it's like to be displaced and to feel that displacement, whether it's to do with cultural heritage or to do with actual location because of being a refugee. And it was a theme that kind of slightly took me by surprise, but really shouldn't have, but was dealt and dealt and depicted in such a sensitive way and such an emotionally charged way as only poetry can. So I really recommend that collection. I'm also going to recommend Hunger by Roxane Gay and this is her memoir of what it's like to be in her body and dealing with an eating disorder. There's also quite a big content warning for this one which will be at the front of the content warnings for Hunger because it's not discussed in the synopsis and you might want a pre-warning and this is a good place to say because I forgot to mention at the beginning I'll have content warnings for all of these books in the description box down below. But yes, Hunger is talking about what it's like to be a fat black woman and to take up that space, but also what it means to have an eating disorder while being a fat black woman. And it was just so unflinchingly honest. She talks about her eating disorder as coming from a place of trauma. And I think a lot of people have found that discussion in I'm glad my mum died, but also I think people who enjoyed or appreciated that story can also appreciate this one. I realised reading this book that there was so much I had to learn about what it means to be a fat person in the world. In terms of discussing what it's like to have an eating disorder while being of that weight is not something that I see discussed too much in books. So that was also incredibly insightful and she also brings the black queer spin on it as she is a black queer person herself. So that was 
all so insightful and I just learned and I learned and I learned while I was reading this book. For parents, once again, I'm going to be recommending a picture book and this picture book is called I Love Me with an exclamation mark in the title. I read this picture book and it really moved me as an adult and I could just see myself giving it to every parent who has a child. It's a picture book where the artists and the drawings are all of black characters following a black family and it's full of positive affirmations that you can say so it encourages the parent who's reading with the child or the teacher who's reading with the child to say this out loud and repeat after the person so some of the positive affirmations are as simple as i am strong i am kind i am beautiful and just seeing a depiction of a black child looking in the mirror and saying i am beautiful moved me beyond words but also as well as all of these ones about being strong it just had such concepts that needed to be taught to children so on the page where the positive affirmations are all about strength and being perseverant one of the ones to pertain with strength is also i can rest and recover when i need to and i just thought this these are the picture books that we need today so if you are someone who is buying picture books for family friends or your teacher or a parent i really recommend i love me exclamation point. Going to a graphic novel recommendation, I want to recommend Wash Day Diaries. I have a whole vlog where I do my own wash day and talk about this book, but my, when I was reading this book, I was feeling, again, emotionally charged and moved because I was looking at the pictures and I was seeing what I was doing myself as I was doing it, and it was just indescribable, that feeling of seeing yourself so accurately represented on the page. I haven't even started talking about what it's about. So the Wash Day Diaries is a graphic novel with a beautiful colour palette. Each short story has its own colour palette. We're following four girls who are all black who are part of a friendship group and we follow them on different days as they all have their individual wash day, whatever that may look like for them and their hair type and they are friends and it kind of all accumulates together in the last story where it talks about their friendship and they're all together and it's all lovely. And I appreciated this book because it's not got that it's not got that many words on a page, but just seeing those images itself was so 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 powerful. I love this depiction of black friendship. They're all from slightly different countries, and yet you get to see that even though they're all black, they've all got their hair washed days, they've all chosen different styles, they are in no ways a monolith, they're all dealing with different things, they all have different advice to give each other when they're dealing with those things, and it's just talking about some of the cultural situations that each of them face and I just appreciated seeing it. It's so lovely to see that on the page. Jumping back into young adult books, this is a young adult book that I wish I had when I was younger and that's Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry by Joya Goffney. So in this one we have this teenager who writes lists of everything and she keeps them all in this journal but when her journal goes missing she kind of has to team up with the boy that she doesn't really particularly like but who is super hot by chance to kind of find the notebook. When I heard that synopsis I have to admit I was not sure the book was for me and then I read it and I just realised there is so much more depth to it than that synopsis gives you. So yes it is about this girl who likes to make lists and she's being blackmailed into doing certain things but there's just so much beautiful character development in this one because she is struggling with kind of I'm going to separate this into talking about friends family and character development so firstly in terms of character development she has a long way to go in the beginning she's quite privileged and she needs to check her privilege throughout this book even though she is a black character she still has certain wealth privilege that she needs to discuss and deal with and I think sometimes it can be easy to forget that even though there are black people all over the world we're all in different class we all face different issues and we all have elements of privilege sometimes in certain ways that we need to check and deal with so it was nice to see that happen but also in terms of a bit of a plot twist to do with the character development because she's being blackmailed and yeah I can't say much more than that without giving the game away but it was nice to see the level of independence and autonomy the character gets in this book. The friendships were really, really nice. Because she doesn't know who's stolen her diary, whether it's a friend of hers or not, she is really facing the issue of can she trust the friends that she has known for all these years? But also she makes new friends and you get to see those new friendship blossom. And I think it was really nice to see the depiction of old friendships and new friendships, the clashes, the things that they can bring to each other. And it gets quite complex and I was very satisfied with where the friendship storyline ended in the end. But also I really get, to, I really appreciate when I get to see black love on a page. And so this is a young adult book, but seeing a black character falling for a black love interest was just so 
satisfying and fulfilled something in my heart that I didn't need to know needed fulfilling and so that was also just a beautiful element to the story on top of the character development on top of the friendships and on top of having to deal with some grief within the family storyline but also facing some hard truths within the family storyline as well. I recommend you a horror book I don't think we've got any horror here. So I'm gonna recommend White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. So this is about a family who are kind of a newly formed family in that the mum has been divorced and now she's with a new partner and they all move into this house as part of this kind of like charity, job related thing. It's a big house, it's in a big neighborhood and the neighborhood is quite run down. They're kind of the last house standing, but there's something not quite right with this house. And so in some ways we're getting a haunted house story, in some ways the horror lies in gentrification, and in some ways it's about this girl who has a past history of being addicted to drugs who's trying to move from it and past it. We've got lots of black characters here, so seeing her friendships form with different types of black people was just so lovely. I love the way that the dialect is worded into the text on the page, so the way the characters speak is really well and accurately represented on the page, which is kind of also really nice to see in young adult books sometimes. And I really liked it. It was one of the ones that I finished it and I thought that was a good story, but it was because of the fact that I was talking about it to everyone the month that I finished it and just kept recommending it all over the place that I realized how much I actually really loved it. And I would love to see more black horror young adult stories being told that I can read, that I can appreciate. And so I'm looking into the genre more and more. I've grown my collection and hopefully we'll have even more of those kind of stories to recommend to you next time. I want to recommend another graphic novel and this is Oxygen Mask. And so this one was kind of written as a love letter to black people post 2020. In 2020, there was a lot going on. We had COVID, we had a lot to do with climate change, and we also had the murder of George Floyd. And so this graphic novel addresses those three things. There's one poem that runs throughout the whole graphic novel and those 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 words in that poem are reshuffled and reordered to bring a different light to each of those three topics but also the artwork in particular speaks rather loudly to show the same words in different forms to match the different things that are being discussed. It was done in a beautiful way and this whole book felt like not to encroach on the stereotype here but releasing a breath that I didn't know was I was holding. It felt like an exhale and it felt like a permission to see that I'm carrying this burden and understand that I'm feeling this burden and let it go as a black person. So I really recommend for more black people to read this graphic novel but also for other people to read it to kind of understand some of the emotions that we're going through in a way that blends artwork and graphics and poetry. I want to recommend What Happened to You by Oprah Winfrey and Bruce D. Perry. This is a hard non-fiction book. I like to call them hard non-fiction, so it's not a memoir. It's a book of interviews and discussions that Oprah Winfrey and Bruce D. Perry have around childhood trauma. So Oprah is black and some of these cases talk about Oprah herself and her experiences as a black woman with childhood trauma but it also opens it up to a wider community of discussing childhood trauma, the effects it has on a person's brain, the social effects that it has, the long-term effects, the short-term effects and it was just so 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 insightful. I don't read too much straight up hard non-fiction and I didn't actually think a non-fiction book about childhood trauma is one that I was particularly interested in but we as a people people of minorities in particular carry a generational trauma often, oftentimes, and oftentimes sometimes we experience childhood trauma and historically we've swept under the rug and we haven't dealt with these traumas. And so I really recommend this non-fiction book. I think it's gonna be insightful to a lot of people, maybe helpful to a lot of people in terms of processing their own childhood traumas, but also learning how to support and appreciate people who have experienced childhood trauma themselves. And then last but not least, I'm going to recommend to you a short story collection and that one that I'm going to recommend is The Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans. This is a fantastic short story collection. I think there were some that I liked more than others, but that makes sense with short stories. And I will always wholeheartedly recommend a short story collection, even if there are a couple that I didn't love as much. I think Danielle Evans has such a good concept with her short stories. All of her concepts are quite different and unique from each other. And they're following loads of different characters in different situations. So it's hard to summarize the short stories as a whole, but I think she does a very good job of writing characters and concepts in particular. 
There are some short stories that still stand in my mind, even though I've read this collection months ago now. So one which has to do with a certain artist who decides she needs to apologise to lots of people. Someone who decides they're going to take care of and raise a child who gets left behind on a coach journey. And also someone who wears a confederate flag bikini and it gets posted online and it kind of takes on a whole life of its own, all the consequences of what she has done wearing this bikini. So as you can tell from those synopses of some stories that have really stuck with me from the collection, they all kind of deal with different things and some of them focus on womanhood, some of them focus on race, some of them focus on relationships to each other in terms of family, romantic or friendships, but all of them will have you thinking about it and have you thinking about why this story is important, why this story is relevant and why this story is being told. And there you have it, those are 20 books by black authors across different genres and different ranges, age ranges that I think I would recommend. There were so many others that I could also choose from but I do this video every year so make sure you subscribe to get more recommendations in future. I've also got other videos about black authors, I've got one where if you like this popular book you should check out this underrated book and another one which is a reading vlog where I read black authors to celebrate UK Black History Month. Let me know in the comment section down below what was the last book you read by a black author that you really enjoyed and would recommend. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video and you know what they say, onwards and upwards. Excelsior!